Hello. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wolf Den Live, episode 173, the only pop culture podcast this week that will not talk about Maisie Williams' sex scene from Game of Thrones. I watched it. Yeah? I haven't seen That's the only part of the <laughs> Game of Thrones I've seen. You, you saw ever. Well, no, no, no. I saw, so I saw the first ever episode. Okay. Didn't really care much for it. Then I, I, everybody was going nuts about this sex scene. Yeah. So I was like, I gotta see this freaking sex scene. Yeah. This, this, there's no sex. Do you, do you know the context behind it? Apparently she was like 14 when the show started she, or something. Uh, the character was, I think, like 8 or 10 when the show started. And she's 18 now. Okay. So like everybody's like freaked out because they watched this little girl yeah. grow up. And then all of a sudden she's doing what... All people do. I, I I get it. I get yeah. why I get why people are weird. I, I've I felt that. Also, way. she still looks very young. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot where it was like a movie or something. Yeah. And I saw like like an actress that I knew from something else, and I was like, oh no, yeah. I don't want this. So I like get it. <laughs> yeah. But really, it wasn't graphic. Like I know. I I didn't think it was. I mean, I haven't seen it, but I imagine it wouldn't have been a big deal. Not really. It really. Yeah. But I mean, it's just that she was. Anyway, hi guys. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Uh, hello, Mictor. Hello, Clint. Hello, Aiden. Hello, Toronto. Hello, Nick. Uh, McDonald. Hello, Dr. Cool. Hello, everybody. Hello, anyone and everyone who is here. So, sorry, guys. Uh, we have a, a bot in the chat tonight to squash any Avengers spoilers. Yes. Or anything. Uh, f- this is just for tonight. As we all know, Avengers Endgame is coming out this week. Um, Early showings are tomorrow, um, and then it debuts Friday. I'm seeing it Saturday. When are you seeing it? Tomorrow. You're seeing it tomorrow? Late tomorrow. Okay. Um, So yeah, and of course, we don't want it to be spoiled. You don't want it to be spoiled. No, so if you say anything Avengers related in the chat, uh, you will get timed out in the chat. (laughs) It's just, you know, a little bit of brute force. Yeah. Don't even, don't even try it. Just remember, I mean, Thanos does demand your silence. That's what the hashtag says. And we got to abide by the hashtag. That is true. Yes. Uh, Also, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, AC, for the 16 months uh, of support here on YouTube. Oh, and also, Ashley and Dylan and 9LX9 and SuperKai46 and Spaceman Spiff and Pip Hardwick. Thank you all. Thank you all for doing that. And of course, thanks. I think as a, I'm sorry, I'm butchering Asayasa. Asayasa. For, Asayasasa. For the 10 Mexican dollars. Yes. And earlier we had, before we went live, we had Pip Hardwick with a buck. Thanks, man. Thank you. Oh, and Brett Young with another buck. Thanks, oh, thank guys. You. Thanks, everybody. Uh, There's not much going on. No. To be completely honest, except for right before we started the stream. For some reason, we got a release date for Mario Maker. For some yeah, reason. Nintendo likes to tweet out news right before we go yeah, live. I, I don't understand. I mean, thank you, Nintendo. You know what? I think it's for spite. Because they know you're not on the list. So they just oh, tweet out list. news. On like, a list of, like, news to get? Uh, you know, like, you're not, like, a certified YouTuber like uh, some of our other YouTube friends. Some of be. our friends who will remain nameless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they said, let's go. Let your imagination run wild as you make and play the Super Mario courses of your dreams when Super Mario Maker 2 launches on a Nintendo Switch on uh, June 28th, which is the tail end of June. Yeah. I wasn't expecting. So, I was expecting the beginning of June. We knew it was June, or did we not know it was June? We knew it was June. We knew it was June. We just didn't know when in June. No, I was expecting during E3. Yeah. You know? Uh, But this is... E3 is the beginning of June. This is the tail end of June. Yes. Uh, The 28th. There's only two more days in June after that. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah. Get ready for that. What happened? My freaking... Yeah, I heard the sound. No, that happened. But that, like, my computer, like kicked me off of watching this with everything uh-huh. but anyway yeah and there's a super mario maker website which i didn't know was a thing but it doesn't there's no information on this website it's just it's everything we know over. oh yeah. they they changed the release date before it said june <laughs> and now it says the real About thing an hour ago so yeah no new information other than a release date which is fine i'm happy we have a release date yeah. maybe some more information soon well like what more information do we need for this game? It's we have, Mario Maker. We have one trailer. True. And there's a lot of stuff in that trailer. Uh-huh. And there's even even the the little picture we have here. 
There's a lot going on there. Like, well, why is that Koopa in a car? <laughs> that's true. There is a Koopa in a car. I mean, f- from my perspective, I don't know how much more they could, they really need to say, other than because it's it looks, for all intents and purposes, just like the first game with more features added in. Mm. So I mean, maybe they'll you know need a trailer to explain the features, like explain the car, uh, the slopes, uh, why Luigi's on the cover as well. Yeah, there's. I'm certain there's multiplayer. Yeah. Because even even in the even in the trailer there there's that little uh, there's that little button that looks like uh, a multiplayer button. Right. So that's a big deal, and we need a lot more information on something like that. Yeah. Um, I'd also expect now we have Joker already in Smash Brothers. We have uh, update 3.0 already happened. Yeah. What's the next DLC character? Yeah. We're gonna need something very soon for that. So uh, even though they just released the the date for Super Mario Maker, I'd still expect like a direct sometime soon. Yeah. It's April. When was the last one? Do we know when the last one was? Was it in January? Yeah, when did, when did they an, long ago. When did they announce Mario Maker? Oh, they announced it a lot. That might have been January. I mean, when was the last direct period? Yeah. Well, they Oh, that was right before Joker came out, they released the Joker video, which was like 15 minutes and it wasn't really a direct. Yeah. Um um, maybe it was when they announced like Hellblade and Mortal Kombat and there's a Wikipedia list of Nintendo yeah. directs that I February remember. February 23rd February sorry February 13th and the Pokemon direct was February 27th that was February 13th was when they talked about Super Mario Maker okay the, no that's what I'm asking you yeah Super Mario Maker okay so February 13th is when they talked about Super Mario yeah Maker. the last Nintendo direct was on April 4th and that was just Fire Emblem Heroes. Okay. And I guess there was some other stuff right. going on there. They also had an indie showcase on March 20th. So, maybe May? Yeah. Beginning of May, we'll get we'll get a little get some, some more information about yeah. something. It's funny looking back on this, because according to the, the official Nintendo Direct website, the featured games from this Direct were Dragon Quest XI and Fire Emblem Three Houses. Whereas Mario Maker 2 was just, you know, a headline. I know, it was the first thing they showed and nobody freaking cared. And then lump it in with all the other crap. Uh, Anyway, uh, Brett Young with the dollar, Brett Young with the dollar, Bruce Patrick with another dollar, Bruce Patrick with another dollar, Chris Peterson with five dollars. Finally, I get to help fund one of my favorite channels. Thank Thank you. And Marim B. uh, Pirate. Subscribing with Twitch Prime over on Twitch. Thank you. Thank you. What are you gonna say about Brett Young? I I saw. I thought he did uh, more. Uh, well, he did more than one. He did yeah. two. Uh, I appreciate it, everybody. Mm-hmm. JP Gamer TV says Smash is Ultimate is overrated, and that's another uh, cause to be banned. If you ask me. <laughs> All right. So another reason why we think there's going to be a Smash Direct sometime soon, Will. Yes is because there's all these reports now saying that the Switch Mini could come out as early as June. Damn. I know. To coincide with the release of Mario Maker. (gasps) I didn't even think about that. (laughs) That's why I'm here. Anyway, I don't know which article to read. I got polygons. It's much shorter, but I also try to read through Bloomberg's. I could summarize Bloomberg. So this, this news came from Bloomberg. Okay. Basically, what happened was uh, they're, they're talking about how, uh, well, the, the headline is Nintendo's big rally on China prospects hasn't scared off shorts. Now, without knowing anything, tell me what that means. Um, Nintendo, Nintendo is looking into getting and selling their system in China, mm-hmm. even though China is going through a lot of things right now that are basically banning a lot of video games in their country. What does hasn't scared off shorts mean? I That's got to be some stock thing i have no idea yeah so apparently a lot of people are buying short stocks okay trying to bet against nintendo a lot of people think nintendo is going to do poorly right so they're betting they're they're buying stocks to bet against nintendo okay which is completely absurd yeah especially since they're trying to enter china yeah which is an insanely big market it's like a like a what is that a like, sixth like, of the world or yeah something? <laughs> Um, so anyway, 
Uh, Nintendo stock. I'm going to read parts of the article because it's a really long article. Nintendo stock has rallied 30% this year, the best so uh, start since 2015, which is weird. Yeah. Because they were not doing well. Yeah. 2015 was Amiibo, I think. Maybe. Uh, and before that was Wii U yeah. territory. Yeah, that's, that's like right at the height of Wii U territory. And that's, they were not doing good. Yeah. They were in the red until they started selling Amiibos. Yeah. Um, still, short sales or bets the stock will fall are more than double their level a year ago. Hedge funds even added to those positions last Friday, the day Nintendo shares rallied 15% as China gave a nod to switch game sales in the country. The clash raises the stakes for Thursday when rookie president uh, Shuntaro Furukawa will unveil financial results for the last fiscal year and guidance for the coming eight uh, for the coming one with short sellers betting against him and analysts expecting more growth Furukawa faces pressure to meet estimates uh, while avoiding last year's mistake of overselling his prospects so um, this doesn't make any freaking sense to me because short sellers are betting against Nintendo mm -hmm. while analysts are expecting growth this more right. evidence that well, I feel like the, st that investors <laughs> don't know a goddamn thing. I feel like investors are really treating this like a big game of poker. Yeah, you know, it's, they're basically gambling. Mm -hmm. They're you know they're that's what stocks are. Yeah, but like they're they're actually playing it like a game rather mm -hmm. than a lot of people treat it like a bank. You know. Well, I guess they're doing that because Nintendo sh uh, sold short of their estimate from last year. Yeah, but marginally short yeah and that's a mistake that uh i guess for Rukawa made or whoever it was before that i forgot yeah. for that um the quote here is nintendo understands better than anyone how critical it is to maintain the current momentum said uh taco takao suzik Suz i'm trying real hard to get these better well suzuki, suzuki. <laughs> that was an easy one. <laughs> an analyst at uh, Daiwa Securities Group Incorporated. Although there's uncertainty over the new hardware and the China launch, we should expect guidance for Switch shipments to keep growing. An outlook for negative growth would be a disaster. Uh, this is what I wanted to read. Short in interest rose to 1.8% of outstanding shares on Friday from 1.7... No, I wanted to read where the what the... Here it is. Analyst estimate Nintendo shipped 17.5 million Switch units in the fiscal year that ended in March, and that will rise to 18.5 million this fiscal year, according to the average of 12 estimates uh, compiled by Bloomberg. 17.5 million in the fiscal year. They, uh, they estimated 18, didn't they? Something like that, yeah. So they missed it by 0.5. Yeah. And that's why everybody's short selling uh, Nintendo right now. But anyway, growth in the current period will get a boost from the launch of a new, cheaper version of the Switch. That's why you clicked on this video. Yeah. According to two people familiar with the matter who requested anonymity to discuss private plans, the new device will likely be launched by the end of June, according to one of the people. The existing Switch will receive a modest upgrade this year, though a more powerful version is not in the works, the people said. Okay. So the previous rumor was that we were going to get like a Switch Pro yes. or a Switch X. Yes, or... which I thought was absurd. And yeah. I, we actually probably talked about on this channel how that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we said that because the previous rumors were from uh, the specs or, or the parts that Nintendo was buying. It was yeah. like the parts supplier. And I'm pretty sure we looked at that and said you can't gather any information from any of this stuff mm -hmm. that... that we know from the parts right. supplier. Um, people were just wildly speculating. Um, I think June is a little early, don't you think? For a, for like a revised Switch or for like a portable version? Just at all. We've been like... I don't know. I feel like if anything... It might be. Something like this might be better off like around the holidays, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I always expect hardware to come out around the holidays yeah. but uh this like we've been hearing these rumors very recently and and a lot of them very recently yeah. and it seems like not many people know much about it it seems like 
really we're getting like little little tiny hints of information like it's in its infancy right like they barely touched it Mm -hmm. but now they're saying june which is two months away well this might have been something they've been working on for a while in secret yeah of course but you know now all of a sudden we're starting to get all the news out it's it's just the the way the rumors are presented. It seems like it it was just like a thought, right? You know, or is like just yeah built up. Well, I think also too the rumors are, were just created based on you know the history of Nintendo hardware, especially portable hardware. They always release like an updated version of it, either like a modest spec bump or like uh, the 3ds to the new 3ds, where it's like a 0.5 incremental right. increase, or even just a you know a a design revision. So. I think yeah. it's just because history has told us to expect it. People were looking for any rumor that could back that up. I think that everybody also wants a pro version. Oh yeah, you know? and that's why that rumor started. Yeah, you know, pe- people saw the little the 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 parts list and the specs and stuff, and they were like, "Oh, this means it's a pro version. Yeah. It's definitely going to be a pro version." So, uh, be careful. You know, don't believe everything you hear. Yeah, uh, Nintendo- only believe us. Yes. <laughs> Nintendo has yet to acknowledge the new hardware, but will likely include it in its uh, guidance, leading to a lot of guesswork and uh, reverse engineering of the figures, analysts said. Any potential uh, revenue from China will most likely not be reflected in the numbers, according to Daiwa Suzuki. Um, so, yeah. N- Nintendo... A big point of sale is going to be China. Nintendo is, is bringing... Is trying to get their switch to China, but yeah. it's not certified yet. They have to get a China compulsory certificate first, right? And then every single game that they release also has to be uh, approved. For yeah. Sale. And uh, to follow this up, this is this is all coming on off of uh, China ending a nine month uh, video game freeze in the country. Oh, really? Yeah. So like they were not accepting any video games at all into the country for nine months as they were revising. Uh, their video game board and like what they're going to allow in um, how many foreign games they're going to take, if any. Um, And the conclusion basically is they've banned three genres of games, um, including gambling titles, such as uh, Mahjong and poker uh, games that deal with the country's Imperial history. Okay. (laughs) and, And games featuring corpses and blood of any color. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, when so Mortal Kombat, which just came out, is never going to sell in China. When is when is this? When when did that happen? Uh, like this week. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. So that was a nine month video game freeze. Yeah. They had a twenty year video game ban. Yeah. Up until twenty fifteen, I believe. Something like that. Yeah. So twenty years, no video games. In yeah. Well, like weird, like offshoot video yeah. games. You know, like Chinese made video games. Mm-hmm. Um. And then as of, you know, nine months ago, they froze it. Yeah. So, like, they had video games for, what, three years? Yeah, and then they're like, stop. Let's just figure yeah. this out, yeah. And previously, Nintendo had uh, four games on the NVIDIA Shield. They, they took yes. a, or Or a Shield-like device, I think. No, it was the NVIDIA was Shield, the Shield, yeah. Uh, they put some Wii U games and ported them over to the NVIDIA yeah. Shield, which people were like, oh, that means they're coming to the Switch, but half yeah. of them were already on the Switch anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out like more. Apparently, this had like a big effect on uh, the the video game market in general because like you know 1.4 billion people didn't have access to games, so that affected sales and the the economics of the video game industry. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be really hard to sell games in China, but mm-hmm. Nintendo is probably going to be the biggest seller there. Oh I yeah. Don't see why not? And oh yeah. There's a lot of like there there should be a lot of interest in Nintendo games. They qualify for all of that stuff. Yeah. They they're they're not going to be blocked by any of that. Mm-hmm. A lot of I mean a lot of American games are pretty violent. Yeah. And those are just But I mean some of those well. you can like remove blood easily from yeah. which Valve did with Left 4 Dead 2. They did that uh when it's trying to get into australia when that had an archaic uh video game ratings yeah. board australia is weird they, they ban a lot of games they're better now reasons. but they're still pretty weird yeah 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 i think uh china also has some weird cultural things like no skeletons yeah like well that, that goes with the whole corpses yeah. and blood oh corpses, yeah. yeah china i mean if you ever look at like the the movie 
requirements in order to get into China. It's very strict. Oh, you have to take the skeleton skin out of Super Mario Odyssey then. Yeah, you got to do that. Maybe dry bones won't. Oh yeah, fly. dry bones will be banned. But he's got to replace Maybe. them with well, regular not human. Right, but Mario's human. Yeah, skeleton outfit. Oh yeah, that's true. Completely human, so yeah. I can't can't do that. I know. I know some movies like back when Hollywood first started, like getting big into like releasing movies in China. They would add scenes that are all about how great China is. Mm-hmm. Like uh, the one of the most famous examples is Iron Man three. The Chinese version of that had brand new scenes all about the doctor who was going to remove the shrapnel from Iron Man's. Yeah, heart. I remember that. Yeah, because that, that that doctor was like in it for four seconds. Yeah, and then in China, it it's was like, like a whole subplot yeah. about how important he is to the Iron Man but they mythos. Eat that stuff up. You know? Apparently, the people who saw it in China was like, that was stupid. Really? It was tacked on and oh. didn't make any sense. But they liked that. No. Too. No, the government of China wants that stuff. The people are like, this is dumb. China likes weird movies. They like all of our runoff. Like, yeah. like, like, uh, the Transformers movies. Transformers movies. Uh, Venom. Venom, yeah. Uh, what was it? The World of Warcraft movie? Yeah. Like, stuff like that. Yeah. That we're like, no, thank you. They, they eat that stuff. So, b- real quick, before we get back into the main topic on the subject of Chinese movies, have you ever seen a movie called Wolf Warrior 2? No. It is the sequel to a Chinese movie called Wolf Warrior. Okay. Wolf Warrior 2 was the, like, eighth highest grossing movie of 2018 worldwide. It outgrossed, like, Wonder Woman and, like, The Fast and the Furious and, like, all of those, like, big American movies. It is two and a half, it's a two and a half hour action movie that is like 50% Chinese propaganda about how great China is. Oh my God. It's also not very good. I mean, I could imagine yeah. it's a terrible It movie. does have some interesting action pieces though. Like the, the opening scene is like one take of a guy jumping from a boat into the water and taking out a bunch of terrorists in the water. What? When did one come out? Was one any good? Did anybody care about I, one? Apparently nobody cared about one. I... Like, I watched it out of curiosity, and it, it's not good, but I admire it, and I appreciate it for what it is. It's on Hulu, if you have it. Wolf Warrior 2. Um, so, I, I, listen, I heard this on the Rooster Teeth podcast, and now I'm trying to look up the actual numbers, but um, uh, America. I'm trying to see how many movie theaters there are in America. Because mm. there's like... 5,000 or something, you know? Yeah. Something like that. Um, I want to get the exact number, though. Because in China, uh, according to the, uh, by January 6, 2014, there were 18,000 screen. No, no, no. There's more than that now. Number of screens in China as of 2016, 74 thousand screens jesus so that's like that's not theaters that's the screens screens in the theater they have an exponentially larger amount of of movie theaters and screens than we do here in america you know Uh, i don't know the exact numbers but it's insanely more uh but they also have an insane amount of people there yeah so yeah but that's why movies do great there yeah but they also they, they consume a lot of media in general so, video games is a big deal. One of the biggest yeah. video game companies in the world is a Chinese company, Tencent. Yeah. Who, like, has their hand in pretty much every video game company. Yeah, they have a hand in e- EA now. EA. They have a hand in... Like, Activision, Blizzard, They Epic. have a huge hand in Epic, who yeah. makes Fortnite. Um, and I think they have a little bit of a hand in Nintendo. I think so they do. Oh, no, they're working with Nintendo yeah. to get games in China. Yeah, they're games. the ones who are going to distribute Nintendo products in China. Yeah, which is, uh, which is a big deal. Yeah. So... If Tencent was an American company, people would be talking about how they might be a monopoly and they need yeah. to shut down. But because it's China, yeah, yeah, that's just the way it well, is. Actually, this, these days nobody cares about uh, monopolies anymore. That's true. There's yeah. too many. This is yeah. a lot of monopolies. Uh, as of March 2018, Tencent is the largest video game company in the world. Tencent wholly or partially owns Grinding Gear Games, uh, Mini Clip, Riot Games, Mini Clip. Epic Games, uh, Activision Blizzard, Ubisoft. Paradox Interactive and Supercell. I haven't heard of Mini Clip in forever. What did they do again? They're the Flash game oh. website. <laughs> you used to play that in high school. Yeah. Until it got banned. Uh, AJ says Tencent has a hand in us all. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think Nintendo is going to have a great year because of that. 
They're going to have a great year because of all the great stuff coming out for the Switch. Uh, the biggest shock here is that they're, 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 the rumors are pointing at a new Switch in June. Which yeah. is, I would, never would have guessed that. Um, and they're, they said in the article more affordable. But I think we can just assume that that's a Switch Mini. I can... And then they, but then they yeah. say the current Switch is going to get a modest spec bump. I think that they just mean that the Switch Mini is the spec bump. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that they're saying that the one that's out now on shelves is going to get a spec bump. Unless right. they like quietly update like a piece of it. Like put a put a slightly better processor. Yeah, or like a better, like a better, better battery, battery in it. Life. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Like uh, we've seen that in other consoles. I right? would imagine it being like a, the the transition from like the G, the GBA to the GBA SP. Nothing too drastic, just like quality of life improvements. Well, I'm talking about the sw- the Switch we have now. Yeah. Because if they're still going to sell that, maybe it'll be like uh, how the Super Nintendo had a different chipset after a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah. Um, or how the Xbox 360, they added an HDMI port and yeah. sold it for the same price. Mm-hmm. Um, something like that. Something something tiny. But then they'll also be selling a Switch Mini. Because yeah. like I, I, I say this a million times. There's no reason for a, like like a massive performance upgrade on the Switch. Like, right. We're not looking for a Switch Pro here. Mm-hmm. A Switch Mini makes a lot more sense, yeah. especially for Nintendo. Yeah. I did read somewhere that a Switch, the Switch Mini. I mean, this is a rumor, but like the Switch Mini would still be dockable. Yes. So that would mean that that's another skew for Nintendo to make a dock that could. We need a new dock. Yeah. That's what we need the most mm-hmm. is a new dock. Something's up with this dock. We need a new friggin' dock. Yeah. Um. And we've said this before too. If you if if we get a Switch Mini, uh, you would you would need a special dock for the Switch Mini. Yeah, the Switch Mini probably wouldn't be able to fit in the dock that we have now because no. because it's too wide. And it would but ha- the current Switch will be able to fit in the Switch Mini's dock. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that makes a, a, a lot of sense. And yeah. Th- yeah, there's no reason for this dock that we have now to be as freaking big. No, as it is. like half of it is plastic. Yeah, uh, 90% of it is plastic. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's an insane amount of it's plastic. Yeah. Um, also, there needs to be some sort of fix with the whole power consumption. Yeah. But that's going to be a, that's going to open that, the door for a whole new slew of problems. Yeah. Because you can't, now you're going to have two chargers, mm-hmm. you know? And Nintendo is, uh, I've said this before too, but I don't remember where the I don't I talk on a lot of things. I don't remember when I say things anymore. Um, you can't have like look at the look at the when they came out with the new 3ds. Yeah, they didn't put a freaking charger in the box. Yeah, which I think is totally Nintendo. To, Nintendo would totally make a Switch Mini and not include a charger. And right, make you buy an extra one. Yeah, but you can't do that if it doesn't work with the old charger. Right, and the old charger isn't very good. Yeah, uh, it it it. The power delivery protocol isn't a standard. It like has a million uh, failures. It, it's, yeah. it's like it's it's working despite itself. Um, that's something that desperately needs to be fixed. But I don't think they would fix it. I don't think they. I don't think they can because of the way that they would have yeah. to sell it. So that's unfortunate. But that would be great if they did fix it. Yeah. But they would have to then educate the consumers to be like look if you get a switch mini here's the charger for the switch yeah mini. do not use the charger for your uh current mm-hmm. switch or it would also be very nintendo to be like yeah sure it all works and then it doesn't and yeah then your switch bricks uh F- frank clark in the chat says people keep saying the pro would be better and it probably would for hardcore players but a mini is going to be a way bigger seller simply because it'll be cheaper yeah yeah and that's the whole reason why they would sell that way more over a pro. I mean, you could say you want a pro yeah. switch all you want, but you also would probably buy a switch mini <laughs> unless you have a switch already. Yeah. If you have a switch already, I can see you wanted to upgrade to a pro, but they're not coming well, for you. They're going for the people that haven't bought a switch. Yet. How well did the two DS sell? Because I feel like the people who would buy a switch mini are the same people who would buy a two DS. You know, they don't want the latest and greatest. They don't want the, the best quality one. They just want a simple device that will play the games. No fuss. No, f- you know, BS. You know, the, the 3DS sold insanely well. Yes. And I know there are people who think that the 2DS XL is the definitive version of that system. Uh, sales. 
Sales of the Nintendo 2DS surged three weeks after launch in the United Kingdom after retailers cut on its price due to poor sales. <laughs> the system was available for around 110 euros, but uh, major retailers, including Argos, Amazon, and Tesco, cut the system's price to under 100 uh, euros to current coincide with... It's not euros, it's pounds. Pounds. To yeah. coincide with the school half term. As a result... This is... Very uh, European. As a result, sales of the Nintendo 2DS increased by 64% week on week, making it the UK's best-selling console of the month without combining the sales of the Nintendo 3DS and its larger counterpart. Uh, During the third quarter of 2013, video game retailer GameStop reported that worldwide uh, hardware sales grew by 15.3% mainly due to strong Nintendo 2DS and 3DS sales. Okay. So compare, compared to the 3DS, I have no idea how well it sold. Right. But the 3DS sold an insane amount. I think the 2DS was a really smart move because uh, nobody cared about the 3D. Yeah. The wedge shape was dumb, but then they yeah. released the, the... The XL. The folding one. Yeah. And that was smart, but that was a little yeah. too late. Um, there were also different versions of the 3DS. There was the new 3DS, which mm-hmm. is a little tiny one. Then there's the new 3DS XL, which is yeah. the big one. Um, yeah. Uh, Nightbot is going crazy right now. I know. <laughs> Taking everybody out of the chat. Uh, Mr. Luna83 with $2 in the Super Chat. Did you pick up Mortal Kombat 11 for the Switch? Oh, yeah. Uh, I did not. You mother. Well, I well because my my friends. I have two friends. One one got it for the Switch, and one got it for Xbox One. Even though he owns the Switch, and we told him to get it for the Switch. Uh, f- From the screenshots that uh, RGT was posting, yeah, it doesn't look very good. I know. I'm waiting. I'm. I, part of me is like, I want to play it on the Switch because if it's available for the Switch, I'll get it for that. Yeah. Um. But like, part of me is waiting to see like what people are saying, like how it compares. Like graphically is one thing. Like, if it doesn't look as good as the Xbox version, I don't care as long as it plays well. Right. Um, also, too, I'm waiting for my credit card bill to, you know, get paid off so I can then buy it. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I'll, we're buying it. The Wolf Den's buying it. I told you. Yeah, but I, I'm not going to use company money just to get a game that I'm going to play. Yeah, yeah, you are. Because <laughs> people like him pay you $2 to talk about it. <laughs> yes, $2 for a $60 <laughs> game. Um, all right, so I'll buy it, and then I'll let you know next week how I feel about it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, see, that's co- that's how content works, Will. That is how content works. Uh, Slim also paid $2 to tell us Switch Update 8.0.1 is out today. And I saw oh. that uh, last night. It just snuck up on the Switch. I yeah. saw I saw a tweet, and I was like, oh, it was just on my Switch. And I turned around, and it was... It's just... It's a... Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, stability. Okay. It, it, that's all it says. That's okay. the only bullet point, so... You need some really stability in your life. Update 8.0.0. Hmm. <coughs> added uh some sort of thing where you could like uh sort your games by category that's cool yeah no folders yet yeah but you know baby stuff give it time also i need a new memory card for my switch but i don't need that for more comment well that you're on your own yeah freaking you want like a giant ass memory card well yeah i have a bunch but uh no longer that big. yeah no I'm, I'm, next time amazon's doing a big ass do i have an extra 200 i might have an extra 200 but you have 120. I have 128, yeah. And, and I have like 40 some, some odd gigs left. Yeah. I'm just going to wait till the next Amazon sale. Because I don't. the next game I'm going to get is like Hellblade and Resident Evil 4. And I'll mm-hmm. have enough memory for both of those. Hey, Mega Man 087. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub for three months. I appreciate the support from all of you. Yeah. You help keep, the, keep these giant lights on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. We're uh, hopefully... Uh, so the whole reason we're talking about the whole June Switch thing is that there's a financial report tomorrow, yeah, Thursday of this week, and people are saying that Nintendo's probably going to say something about it then, so that people know, so that investors know what the company's yeah. doing. But that's a very public call, right? I don't. If they want to keep it a secret, they're not going to say anything. Yeah, I don't think. I, I don't think they're going to let it slip out in. Something like that is not something you would announce in a financial call. Right. You know? So mm-hmm. I don't think that's going to happen. But anyway, that's all the reason we're talking yeah. about. Uh, I didn't put our stories in, a, in an order okay. here. 
So if you, do you want to just run them down? I guess we or, can do them in the right. order they're here, but... All right. But first, uh, Andy Ackerman with $30. Got, I got you for half your game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, $30? 30, Jesus yeah. Christ, Thank you. Man. I will download it tonight, then. Uh, they See... We, we love you, you guys. guys care. Are great. Uh, so I I like this story, Will, because this is the the this is how the news week is going. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Nintendo Life, Will, some Nintendo fans think Reggie deserved a better chair during his time at Nintendo. Now this is a big deal to me, Will, because I'm you know I I studied office chairs for a little bit. Okay, you know, and I saw that chair and I was like, a better chair than that? That's a nice chair. Yeah, you know. But the article says, when you consider the lifestyle of company president, it's only natural to assume they drive the best car, live in a mansion, and sit in an expensive chair all day behind a desk made of pure gold. All right, now they're exaggerating. While this might be the loose reality of some leaders, this was not the case for the now former Nintendo of America president, Reggie fils Last week, when Reggie showed some of the items around his office as he packed everything into boxes, an eagle-eyed fan noticed something wasn't quite right. You see, it's all to do with the chair behind his desk. According to Nintendo fan and Twitter user Jason Cryer, Reggie has quite possibly been sitting in an entry-level Herman Miller (laughs) Mira desk chair for his entire career. Do you know Herman Miller desk chairs? Oh yes, no, I don't. No, you don't? no I have. They're no like idea. really expensive desk chairs. Yeah, they're like they're like the the standard for desk chairs right. in like an office environment, but mm-hmm. they're really expensive. Yeah, they, they could go up to like a thousand dollars. But this is an entry level <laughs> one, Will. And for the record, entry level is still like hundreds of dollars yeah. for a desk chair, and it's not even. It doesn't even look. It's not that. Herman Miller chairs, they look like you can get them at IKEA. Yeah. You know? her, uh, f- just a quick Google search. The one that uh, f- the Herman Herman Miller Mira chair that looks similar to what's in the picture is like four hundred dollars. Yeah, that's that's still an insane amount of money for a chair. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I mean, freaking uh, the DX racers go up that much. Yeah, but uh, you can get a good like uh, like like gaming chair for like two fifty. Yeah, which is why I think gaming chairs are pretty are a pretty good idea because. Freaking office chairs are 400 for a cheap one. Yeah. You know? I am in the market for a new chair. Listen, man. Reggie's throwing it's his It's good way. enough for Reggie, yeah. I The problem is uh, Secret Lab. They're a gaming chair company. They make a Batman one. And it's $400. Ooh, listen, man. I mean, I have a heart. Yeah, if <laughs> What's the company? Secret Lab. Secret Lab. If you're listening to the podcast. Secret Lab, yes. Uh... A ba- a Dark Knight themed Omega or Titan series chair. Holler at your boy. <laughs> Apparently, this is a big deal that it's only a Herman Miller, you know, entry level chair because the chair is 16 years old. <laughs> it's an old chair. I mean, I w- that's the whole reason. I work in an office. I've worked this. in offices. We have like the most basic bitch chairs you can get. Uh, f- I mean, I don't think inten- like any most companies let alone gaming companies are going to be stacked with you know these plush you know dx racer chairs or things like that My, the company i used to work at yeah had two of these chairs mm-hmm. it was for the coo and the ceo <laughs> everybody else got the basic bitch yeah. ass chairs but office like i said office chairs are expensive yeah. so you might be sitting in a chair like this and not even realize you're sitting on yeah. top of at least four hundred dollars I mean, yeah i gotta check to see which type of chair i'm sitting on at work i bet you i bet you it's a herman, herman miller. miller yeah there are two kinds there's the 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 gray ones and the orange ones the orange ones are only for the conference rooms the gray oh. ones are for the peons but the gray ones have lumbar support lumbar support is very important yeah that's why i like my dx right? yeah i don't like the bucket seats in these gaming chairs yeah Those are stupid but the lumbar support is very important and my neck i need something on my neck when i used to work in like an like a regular office chair yeah i would work like this because i need <laughs> i uh, like slouched in yeah i need my neck to be supported we're, we're we're lanky boys will we are all right so that was a dumb article yeah uh hey our best friends over at retrobit are making a new control? There, th- no, this is Retro Flag. Yeah, Retro Bit. They retro make, Bit. Uh, they, the the they, Brawler sixty four. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. And they're working on the uh, 
Dreamcast one. Yeah. Yes. Which I kickstarted. Yes. For some reason. Well, because Dreamcast. Everything for the Dreamcast is good. Yeah, but I don't. I was like, I don't need a new Dreamcast controller. The, I feel the like, N64 controller, I need a new one. Right. But the Dreamcast, not really. But then I, feel I picked like, that up and I was like, all right. Yeah, the Dreamcast controller, it's not obvious that you need a new Dreamcast controller. It's not the button placement. It's the design. It's just not comfortable. Yeah. Um, the, the N64, the problem is the button placement. Yeah. But anyway, RetroBits Tribute, to 64, uh, RetroBits Tribute 64 controller can be used with the N64 or your Switch. That's interesting. Now, this design looks bizarre, but this is the Hori. Yeah, so Hori made an N64 controller that pretty much looked exactly like mm -hmm. this. And a lot of people praised it for being much more ergonomic and having better button placement than the original N64 controller. Today, at yeah. the time, people were like, what the hell is this right. weird looking thing? But... Uh, they had the foresight to know that this was a that that the N sixty four. It looks was strange because it puts the D pad like in a really weird spot. Yeah, but the D pad you don't need for most games. Yeah. Well, there, there's like a handful of games that you would need the D pad for. But you don't use it. You don't use it with the frequency that would require it to be, you know, in a in a prominent position. I don't know a single game that required you to use the N sixty four controller. The, the left and right sides of the controller. The, I know the, the THQ wrestling games did. Oh. Yeah. But oh. those are the those are the only four games I know of that will require that. Yeah. So so for that case, you use the Brawler 64. I, I know that most games that you use the D-pad at all, it's for like inventory and then you yeah. just move your finger over there or something, you know? So anyway, yeah, Retro Flag's making this this uh, they they're, they're redoing the little Hori controller, but yeah. it works for the Switch, which is interesting. I don't know what games I would want to N sixty four games. Yeah, but yeah. what are there? There there are none right now. Turok, but that's an HD remaster, so Turok. that's been that's been remapped to modern controllers. Right. That's another thing is that like a lot. Even if they did put an N sixty four game on the Switch. The buttons would have to be remapped already. Yeah, that's a problem with the with the Sega Genesis Classics. Collection. Yeah, because they're remapped to a Switch controller. Yeah, and then yeah. you get a Sega Genesis controller, and it doesn't work. And it doesn't yeah. freaking work. So according to this, it's not that they're going to release one controller. It's two controllers: one with an X sixty four input connector, and one with a USB connector. Oh, that kind of sucks. Yeah, and the USB connector one is five dollars more. That's weird. Sorry, four dollars more. Oh, I guess. Maybe they have to pay for the standard. I okay, I don't. I don't know. Um, that's weird. Yeah, I don't like that. I wish it was like an adapter or something. Yeah, well like then the there might be more latency. Maybe. If it's an adapter. Yeah. But uh, yeah, because then like what? Then I have to buy two. Yeah. You know. I am waiting for the day where somebody makes a wireless N sixty four controller. Because it has to exist. I don't think it does. It if it does, exist. it's probably some like crappy no name. Knockoff company. Like 8 bit Dude doesn't make one. I don't know of any like mods that are out there. Um, Hyperkin doesn't make one. Is there a is there a reason why they don't make one? I just don't think they're like people are looking to make one. Hyperkin. Really? Yeah. Hyperkin's Admiral is a wireless Bluetooth N64 controller coming out next year. It might not have oh, oh it, next year. That was as of November, so it might not have even come out. Yeah. It's certainly interesting looking, though. Yeah. Well, they probably wanted something more ergonomic. For all that N64 you're playing. Yeah. I have to say, I've been using the RetroBit Brawler 64 like every time I play N64. I do yeah. not touch that stupid green thing yeah. right there. I, I use the Brawler 64. It's um, a thousand times better. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, I just got an email. Switch Pro Controller review request. Nope. I don't right. know. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it's them. That would that would be cool, though. Yeah. They were like, hey, I'm watching hey, you right now. Do you, guess want, what? Do you want one? Yeah. All right. So, uh, I don't want this. I would want this if it was, if there were some Switch games. Yeah, I know. Like if there were some N64 games on the Switch. but I'm trying to think of like what games 
would support like it would be good for. The only N64 games I can think of that are on Switch right now is again Turok and Turok 2, but those are ports. So those have been remapped anyway. Smash, if you want that like really classic feel, but it's probably not the buttons aren't probably gonna be masked properly. Oh, the Cyberquake says Retro Fighters did the Brawler 64. Oh. Retro Bit is a completely different company. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Especially because hey, I, I do this all the time. We're friends that was with you. We're friends with. Uh, well, they've sent us the Brawler sixty four. What? That, the one oh. we have. The one we have. I bought. Did they? I thought they. They sent, sent us something else. Okay. Um, oh, they sent us the Pokeball chargers. Yes. Yes. Oh, Retrobit is the company that it's doing the new Genesis and Saturn controllers. Yes, they and they sent this stuff too, didn't they? Maybe. They did the same thing where they released one with uh, Genesis port connectors and one with USB connectors. That, I don't. It's I the hate same that. thing. I hate that. Retrobit hit us up for something. I don't remember what though. Or maybe I just know them from this. Oh, they make the Super Retro Trio, which everybody's like, "Oh, what about oh. the Super Retro Trio?" But that is exactly the same as the. Uh, Oh, the Retron? Yeah, the yeah, Retron yeah. 5. Those uh, Sega controllers are officially licensed by Sega. That's cool. Yeah, and like the box art is original Sega box art. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so, completely different companies. Yes. Big mistake. Retro Bit didn't make the Brawler 64. No. But they're very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't want this. I don't know a single N64 game on the Switch. <sighs> And I'm looking at the chat to see if anybody... Yeah. If anybody knows of an N64 game that's on the Switch. Yeah. Or something from that generation. Yeah. And not a remake like... Uh, like Turok. Like Turok, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, hey, Mortal Kombat 11 DLC leaked. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, f- oh, I clicked the wrong article. Yeah, so Mortal Kombat 11 came Joker out Joker from... From, yeah, from Persona. Yeah, Switch, Smash Brothers isn't the only game that has a Joker in its DLC, but unlike Smash Brothers, it's the real effing Joker. So, uh, the Switch version of Mortal Kombat 11 using a hack tool can be made to unlock its files, which inevitably means uh, references to all current and future characters can be found. In this case, Reddit user Leon uh, Leo Nathan, whatever it is, dug up all characters ref referenced as DLC in the game file, spoiling presumably all surprise reveals. They're so confident in this information, the Reddit user even wrote a guide on how to on how those inserted can see it, how those interested can see for themselves. Many have since verified this list with screenshots of the game's code. In this data mine, nine characters were uncovered, which is interesting because the combat pack, part of the premium edition, includes access to six. Uh, it's possible a second season pass will be announced down the road, as was the case with Mortal Kombat X. So, the nine uncovered characters so far. Shang Tsung, which is we, everybody already knew. He was already announced to be in the first. Oh, okay. I was going to say, he's not in it? Why he's he? he's the, uh, the keeper of the crypt. The okay. crypt keeper, if you will. Fun fact, he's played by the guy who played him in the 90s movie. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, f- Joker from DC Comics. <laughs> You know, the real Joker. Uh, Nightwolf. The Terminator. As in, The Terminator. <laughs> Sindel. Spawn. Uh, Ash. Fujin. And Shiva. Uh, it looks like maybe each DLC character will be a Mortal Kombat character and then... Like, the licensed like character? A licensed character, yeah. Yeah, th- they did that with Mortal Kombat X because in addition to the Mortal Kombat characters, they had Leatherface, they had Jason, they had Alien and Predator. Is Ash... From the Evil Dead? Or is that, you know, a, is that a Mortal Kombat character? I don't think there's a Mortal Kombat character named Ash. Uh, so it, it might very well be Kombat. Bruce Campbell's Ash. Yep. Yeah, there's no Mortal Kombat character yeah. named Ash. And Fujin and Shiva are Mortal Kombat characters. Yes. And so is Sindel and Nightwolf. Yeah, so... Oh. Yeah, I think... they're. I think they're gonna... They're gonna release... A Mortal Kombat character and a, a licensed character, a licensed yeah. character together in yeah. the same pack. I mean, it's cool that we're getting Joker. Mm-hmm. You know, 
because you know, of course, Nether Realm does Injustice as well. Uh, they haven't really done a DC character in Mortal Kombat since Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe. They they can't do somebody like Batman because no, yeah, no, there's they very, really can't do heroes because yeah, no, there's, they're too violent. There's very few characters they can put in this. Joker is a perfect character, yeah. and also too, he's got a stupid movie coming out, so this would be a great way to like cross promote with that. Oh yeah, there's no like Lobo. Yeah, maybe. But like, you really can only do villains. In, yeah, in, in a and of those villains, Joker would be like the most. Or like if it was Marvel, you could do the Punisher. Yeah. This would also, too, be a great way to uh, reintroduce the Joker's fatality from Mortal Kombat vs. DC, which got uh, neutered in the North American version. He, like, the Joker pulls out his, like, trick gun and he shoots it. And it's like, you know, bang, ha, 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 very funny. Then he pulls out a real gun and shoots you in the head. Okay. Yeah. They, they like, censored that in Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe to get the T rating. That's so. Well, yeah, well, this is this is yeah. a straight up M rating. <laughs> yeah. I don't care about that in this. And is this also for Switch gonna get all this yes. DLC? Yeah, Switch is getting all the DLC. That's cool. Yeah. AJ says, plot twist, it's Ash Ketchum. That would be interesting. <laughs> uh Bush Baby Omega says Charizard bites Scorpion's head off fatality. Tom S with one uh Euro or pound. Pounds, that's know. a pound. Thank you for the thank, thank you, you for the for the one of those. <laughs> um. All right, all right. There's another Mortal. There's Kombat more Mortal thing. Kombat news. Mortal Kombat 11, 11 is selling a character you can unlock for free. I don't like that one. Bit. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 recently revealed this roster of final playable characters. Um, one of them being Frost, the stylish Sub Zero apprentice, is unlockable by playing the campaign. Uh, get this ad out of my face. But for those of you who want a shortcut or just aren't interested in the story mode, you can purchase her separately. Frost is available on Steam and consoles for $6. On PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, she appears to only be listed through the in-game marketplace rather than as a separate game item on the storefronts themselves. The price is consistent throughout the different platforms. Uh, this article, the, the first ad is Ninja, like Red Bull, Twitch uh, Ninja. Yeah. And I was like, ninjas in Mortal Kombat? <laughs> <laughs> that would be uh, that would be interesting. Uh, Frost is a unique inclusion on the character roster as all the other playable characters are available right from the start. Frost is locked is a locked character only obtainable completing Chapter 4 of the story campaign or by purchasing her. While selling a shortcut to an item that can be unlocked through normal play isn't uncommon... The store listings do not appear to give an indication that she can be obtained without a purchase. In fact, her store listing is very similar to the one for Shao Kahn, who can only be obtained through purchase if you, if you missed him as a pre-order bonus. Steam reviews on the DLC are mostly negative, with many players citing the fact that you can unlock her through play. What's the whole deal with uh, ice characters? Why are there so many? Uh, there's two. There's Sub-Zero and Frost. But then there's Sub-Zero again. All right. Do you really do you really want to get into the Mortal Kombat? Yes. War? All right. So in Mortal Kombat One, there was Sub Zero. Right. Uh, according to the lore, Scorpion kills him as revenge for uh, killing his family, okay. killing Scorpion's family, which Sub Zero did not do. Mortal Kombat Two through today, the Sub Zero is the younger brother of the original Sub Zero. Okay. Noob Cybot is actually the reincarnated original Sub Zero. So there are four now. Well, f oh no, Noob Cybot isn't Noob a Frost character. No, he's just the reincarnated original Sub Zero. Okay. Yeah. So that's two. Okay. Then, and if it's like Deadly Alliance or Deception, introduce Frost, who was like Sub Zero's apprentice. Mm -hmm. Then Mortal Kombat 2011 reset the timeline. So there was just the first two Sub Zeros. And then the so, second so Sub Zero and his brother. Yeah. Okay. And then Sub Zero, the younger, turns into a cyborg. So that's three now. So okay. Then Frost comes back in Mortal Kombat X as a non playable character. And who the hell is Frost? And a, a Sub Zero's apprentice, okay. who has the same abilities as Sub Zero. Okay. But she's a she. Okay. So there's that. So uh, what do we care? Oh, because, uh, because now they're charging for it, even though you can get it. You can game. get it, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> You can get it in the game, or you can buy it. Yeah, I feel like they need. We we talked about this a while back when I said that um, 
Resident Evil 2, the remake, yeah. is selling like cheat codes basically, but you can unlock them. I in think the game. I had the same reaction. I was like, that's dumb, that's stupid. And then I was like, wait, but who cares? Because yeah. if you can get it for free, why not? Yeah. I mean, it's all about whether or not you want to work for the stupid character. people are going to buy it. Yeah. And tournaments. Yeah. Tournaments will buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't have to work for it. I mean, chapter four, though, doesn't sound like that's far in the game. Yeah, it's not far at all. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, whatever. I don't it, know. It's, it's whatever. I, I feel think, like... I think it sounds bad, but it's really it not It sounds bad. bad, but they need to make it more clear that, like, you can unlock her for free in the game. Yeah. But, like, and they should say, like, you know, the impatient bundle or whatever if you don't want to wait to unlock her. Mm-hmm. Or if you don't... Some people don't play the campaign of these games, even though they should because they're amazing. I, I like campaigns for fighting games. Yeah. And even in, like Marvel vs. Capcom 3, I yeah. think, at the end, you would just get like a less than 30 second like scene that was like two pictures and some dialogue. And I love that stuff. Yeah. I ate that up. Yeah. No, the, the NetherRealm games are great though because in addition to having the standard, you know, the tower that you climb, you know, one person at the other at the other, they had this really deep and in-depth and like complex campaign mode with full cutscenes and story and all this stuff, and it's like really awesome. Mm. So, you know, why wouldn't you want to play the campaign for these games? And the the campaign for Mortal Kombat 11 just looks bonkers. The Injustice one was awesome. Yeah. Holden Drake with five dollars says, "Hey guys, do you still go out and take pictures with your Game Boy camera? Yes. Go to our check out our Instagram. That yeah, I, I post." a bunch of pictures of the game boy camera i'm every fourth picture is a game boy camera picture that's how it's gonna be okay for our for our instagram um, um and of course my best friend in the whole world lkm cherokee hey will thoughts on shazam 4 which came out a month ago uh martian manhunter 4 which also came out a month ago flash 69 and detective comics uh 1002 uh shazam 4 i actually did uh, catch up on those if it's over like two weeks old chances are i'm not going to read them but i did this for you cherokee because we're bros uh shazam was wasn't bad uh it was nice to see 20 the tiger just show up uh martian manhunter has as an artwork 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 book it's a book that i would suggest people get primarily for the artwork because the artwork is very good um even though the story is not grabbing me in the slightest. Uh, Flash 69 was nice. And Detective... Uh, it, I've downloaded it, but I haven't read it yet. Uh, and Detective is the only one of those books that is actually on my pull list. So I'm guaranteed to read that. At least not... If not immediately, then within that week. It's hard to read comics when we started the sh- doing the show at 8. Because now i got to come over here, eat dinner, and then prep for the show. You don't leave me a lot of time. I also work 9 to 5, so I can't really read comics while on the job. Uh, f- what else we got? You good? I, I went to the bathroom while he was in nice, nice, nice little pee break for you. Nice little pee break. Yeah. Um, all right. Hey, now, uh, Avengers Endgame has no postcard scene. Spoilers. Also, if you're in the chat right now, don't talk don't about Don't talk about Don't say yeah. anything about Avengers or anything. Yeah. So, because you will be kicked out of the chat. So this isn't really a spoiler, um, because we're not like saying any like plot details or anything. But it's been confirmed, at least due to the the press screenings and the premiere that happened this week, um, that Avengers Endgame will not feature any mid or post credit sequence at all. I think that might have something to do with how it ends, but also. I'm going to sit there until the screen goes black. There's no, yeah. there's no way I'm getting up from but my seat. There, they said that there is sound at the end. Like at the end of the, at the very end of the credits, you hear like a sound. Oh, it's like the Godzilla roar in uh, Pacific Rim? King Kong. Skull King Island. Kong? Really? It's Kong Skull Island. That was, that was a full post credit scene though. That wasn't a... No, I think there was a just a roar in Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim? Yeah, I think so. Because I know in Kong Skull Island, there's a full scene where like... You know, Kong wasn't the only monster. We found these cave drawings, and it's a drawing of Godzilla. Um, I know Rise of the No Dawn of the Planet of the Apes had a sound post-credit scene where it was like Koba Koba coming out of the rubble, 
but then Koba wasn't in War for the Planet of the Apes, so it wasn't worth it seeing. Um, uh, let me see. So right. by a number of my friends that when the first kaiju appears in San Francisco, Godzilla's roar could be heard at some point during the initial rampage. I plan to see it again. Oh, so I don't know. I, never mind. Yeah. It was not a post credit thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, this could make sense because Endgame is not the official end of Phase 3, but it's the end of like this era of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So um, they're, every, like everything's going out on like a high note. Um, this is like the closing chapter for a lot of these characters. So maybe no post credit scene is like their way of signifying that, yes, this is like we're closing the book on this. Yeah, in this saga. Maybe they're sick of post credit scenes. Maybe. And they're like, we don't want to do them anymore. Yeah. Uh, I think something's going to happen where it's going to be an artistic fit for the end to, yeah. just, to just end. I, f- you know, part of me thinks that they just didn't put a post credit scene for the press screening. And that the oh. the version that got shipped out that the because when they did the press screening for Avengers one the shawarma scene wasn't included they filmed that the week before it was going to be released that's a very good point yeah so there there is still that possibility that's true the, the and the shawarma scene didn't really add anything yeah it was literally just them sitting at a table eating shawarma basically if there's going to be a post credit scene in Avengers Endgame it's probably not going to be anything important right. Uh, but yeah, I think I, that makes a lot of sense that they would just do it only for the theatrical yeah. release. So this isn't the first time they didn't do a post credit scene. Incredible Hulk didn't have one. It had the the Tony Stark scene wasn't even a mid credit scene. It happened like right before the credits. Mm-hmm. Um, and Age of Ultron only had a mid credit scene. It didn't have an end credit scene. Yeah. So there is precedent for this, but. This is Endgame. This is the biggest film they've ever done. You'd think they would throw in a post credit scene. I am going to be glued to my chair until the lights go on in the theater and the screen goes black. Okay. And the guy goes to mop everything. Uh, when that happens, just text me yes or no. Okay. <laughs> the best was I saw Ant-Man like a week after it came out. Yeah. Which never happens. I always see these Avengers movies. Or these Marvel movies when they come out. Yeah. But uh, there was a guy. A guy came. The lights went on when the credits rolled, and then like the people came in to clean, and then there yeah. was like this guy with a mop. Uh, and then he went to go clean, and it was like, oh wait, no, there's still stuff going on. <laughs> so we like waited there. Yeah. And then the end of the last Ant Man movie happened, where yeah. the, all that stuff happened. Yeah. And then the screen goes black, and he goes, "Holy crap, man! <laughs> you mean that's it? Yeah." Man. Wait. You talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp? Yeah. I was there with you for that. I don't remember that. You were not with me for that. For Ant-Man and the Wasp? Yeah, me, you, and my wife went to see it. Because we all missed it. Oh, that's why I probably went late. Yeah. No, it ha- I'll, t- I'll, I'll explain it in more detail after. Okay. But it happened. It okay. Because definitely- the guy yeah. was like, oh, crap, man. That's yeah, crazy. no, because we were on vacation when that movie came out. Yes, that's why. And... Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert, we're going to be on vacation when Spider-Man Far From Home comes out. Wait. It comes out July 5th. <sighs> I'm, uh, that I'm seeing when it's out. I don't care. Yeah, I'll go alone. I don't give a I crap. I think we're flying home that day. Ah, <laughs> damn it. We might have to see it that Saturday. <laughs> damn it. Homecoming is my favorite Marvel movie. Homecoming is great. Yeah. yeah, and I'm really looking forward to this. Or it's one of, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's definitely it's one top of. It's up three, there. It's, yeah. You got Homecoming, Homecoming uh, Civil War. Winter Soldier. That's what I mean. Homecoming, Winter Soldier. Uh, friggin' Iron Avengers, Man 1. Uh, Infinity War. Infinity War. Iron Man 1, get out of here. Okay. D- shut up. Uh, Guardians 1. I don't I also... That's a really good movie, but yeah. I, that's not my in my top three. Yeah. One of these days, I'm going to do a list of all the Marvel films. Rank them. Just get me drunk enough, I'll do it. That'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, people in the somebody in the chat said that uh, a home, uh, far from home is the end of the timeline. Far from home is the definitive canonical end of Phase Three. Mm-hmm. Kevin Feige confirmed that. Like it, it's kind of like how Ant Man Ant Man was the end of Phase Two, even even though it came right after Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, yeah. I here's the thing because that kind of made sense because like Age of Ultron was a big movie and then Ant-Man was like a little palate cleanser like epilogue type thing 
But Age of Ultron wasn't as big or as like epic as Infinity War or Endgame mm-hmm. was. You know, Endgame is clearly like the end. I don't know how you can do an ep- uh, like a straight epilogue after that. Mm-hmm. Like S- Spider-Man shouldn't be like an epilogue. It should be like a main chapter in the story. Yeah, and like Spider-Man's alive now. Like yeah. it's, it's it's very clearly after Endgame and yeah. it's like a new it's a new chapter. So like yeah. that's weird that that's the end of the phase. Um all right, well anyway, that's 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 it. Yeah. That's all that's happened this week. That's it. Yeah. That's all you got. So, goodbye. <laughs> um, no, now, it, what are we? Tweet of the week? Tweet, uh, do we have an unboxing? No, we don't. Oh, wait. Before you say anything, J. Ewan Park with 2,000 W's says, hey, brothers, been a while. How you all doing? And then in parentheses, $2, because that's what it translates to. Because he, he knew we would say that. Yeah. I am well. How are you? It's a one. It's a Korean dollar. I knew that. I knew it was Korean. I, I didn't, didn't know what it was called, but I knew it was Korean. Uh... Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, now we'll do the tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Now we'll mark your little curse curse button. Uh, hold this on. one. This one's this one's a doozy. This okay. one's got a lot of them. <laughs> oh God. Hold on. Let me just let's just do this general. Maybe right. maybe, uh, just, maybe some, just put some elevator music here. Yeah. This is a uh, video from Sonic Adventure with uh with 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 captions. And it's, uh, <laughs> what's his name? Alex Jones. Listen, you son of a bitch. What the fuck's your problem? You get in my face with that, I'll beat your goddamn ass, you son of a bitch. You piece of shit. You fucking goddamn fucker. Listen, fuckhead. You- oh, you get the point. Yeah. I don't need to play the rest of it. Uh, That's Twitter video for you. I'm hoping that, like, most of it is just drowned out by the loud music. Nope, it won't be promise you uh i might just bleep the whole thing because it's alex jones <laughs> you gotta put a little elevator music in there put, put royalty free elevator music yeah um, i'll put the golden eye elevator music <laughs> yeah there you go uh, um yeah anyway yeah there's no unboxing so now is when we talk to you people yes as always, you can reach us on Twitter using the hashtag WolfDenLive. If you left a comment on last week's Wolf Den Live, this is the part of the show where we will finally answer your questions. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at this very moment, start asking your questions because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Uh, I know we're not doing the chat first, but Dan G in the chat says, just followed you guys on Instagram. Love your photography, but you should post more. I know, I'm trying to get a lot better <laughs> at posting on Instagram. The problem is... I over I overthink it too much. Yeah, because we the 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 photography is nice. Half of it, most of it is in, is James. It's not me. <laughs> yeah, James Morano. Um, so if you want more nice pictures, go follow James Morano. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I overthink it too much, and then I'm like, ah, I just won't post anything. Uh, anyway. What do we do first? Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag Wolf Den Live over on Twitter.com. Uh, uh, oh. So Bianca said, only just caught Wolf Den Live, so don't know if you know this already or found some other way, but you can pay for Spotify Premium with your PlayStation account. It's like $5 a month and syncs to all your other devices. It's how I use my subscription and much less of a hassle. Hmm. So if you have PlayStation Plus, you get a discount on Spotify. It sounds That's like. interesting. Well, uh, Sony uses Spotify for their PlayStation Music. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, I got to do that. Yeah. Well, I have Hulu now. I did the thing where I oh, yeah. it, like it's together. Oh, good. You can watch Wolf Warrior 2. <laughs> Is that That's real? on Hulu. That's a real thing? That's oh, on Hulu. Yeah, why do I spend all that time <laughs> making it up? <laughs> <laughs> just made up a whole I just made up a whole movie. movie. <laughs> um... There was something else we talked about last week that I had an update on that I forgot about. I should have wrote it down. Oh, well. Uh, John, using the hashtag Wolfden Live, Will, have you been reading War of the Realms or any of the tie-ins? And are you both going to be checking out Endgame when it comes out? Also, how dare you disrespect Suffolk County and say Nassau is better? Well, I hate to tell you. Uh, yeah, sorry, Nassau bro. Something. Uh, no, I'm not reading War of the Realms. Um... I heard it's very good, 
But I also heard it ties in a lot to Jason Aaron's Thor run, and that is like a 10-year saga that I have not been keeping up with. Uh, I'll keep my eye on it, though. I've, I've heard good things about it so far. Uh, maybe maybe I will check it out when it's done. <laughs> you know, trade waiting never hurt anybody. Also, yes, we are both going to watch Avengers. Yes. And ask us again about it next week. And we will see it in... Actually, no, I'm seeing it in Suffolk County. Damn it! <sighs> uh, I am not. I was... I was forced to see it in nasa uh wait you're you never mind it's uh, yeah <laughs> uh, off the chat i'll explain it to you pj says will would you ever consider reading comics on stream or maybe playing comic book related games also how do you both feel about casting for the sonic movie so before you answer okay reading comics on stream sounds awful yeah but what the hell's her name? Sea Monster, which is a streamer Fred talks about all yeah. the time. She's really good. She reads manga on stream okay. and comics. She's really good at it because she does voice acting. So she hmm. does the voice acting for the characters. So if I were to do the voices for the characters. Yeah. Yeah, like I like I know like back in the early days of the channel when we like we first started like streaming, like we were thinking about like how to incorporate comics on stream. And there's just no way without it sounding like a, a kindergarten teacher reading to class. Yeah, yeah, it, it's that's not. Good. You know, you read the book and then you show the pictures yeah. and you move on. You could do like a like a book club. Yeah, if, book if we club. have a Patreon or something. Yeah, that could be like a Patreon goal. But you know, uh, yeah, just reading comics on stream. Unless you do like a like a radio show version of it, I don't see a way to do it. Yeah. Um. What was the other question? Playing comic book related games. Uh, f- well, I mean, we might have to when Ultimate Alliance 3 comes out. True. Because that, like, is both of our things. Uh, how do you both feel about the casting for Sonic movie? I think it's fine. The casting the is casting fine. Is gonna be a the problem, casting yeah. was never the problem with <laughs> yeah. this movie. I am in, I am wa- uh, anticipating what, uh, what Ben Schwartz will sound like as Sonic. Because apparently they're keeping that under wraps. That's weird. He said, like, I'm not even allowed to, to say, like, do my Sonic voice yet. They don't want me to bring that out yet. I'm like, Why? Somebody else spliced some of his like, um, like some of his voice clips into like Sonic Boom or something. Yeah, and it, he sounded good. Yeah, yeah. No, he he seems like a good choice. Uh, I don't know why this didn't update, but Jordan, aka Super Saiyan, says, "How you guys doing? What's going on in your life? Feel like you don't get asked that enough. I get asked that fine. You don't need to know anything yeah. about my life. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm fine." Life is fun. I don't yeah. do anything besides this. You see me like every every day. I'm doing all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm all right. Nobody worry about me. Nobody worry about me yeah. either. Uh, Brian in the chat says, "Nice foot, Bob. Thanks, man." <laughs> the forced perspective makes my foot look yeah. so massive. All right. Last week in the comments, uh, it's buried here. Uh, we got wait. Yes. We yeah. Got, Renee J. While developers for Sony can just focus on one console to get the max potential out for Xbox, developers will have to max the games for four different systems. What? Not sure what Microsoft is doing, but it's a mess. Also, GameStop recently... Well, let's do it one let's, piece at a time. Yeah. Uh, who, who said that they're doing it for four systems? I think Renee is thinking of the launch Xbox, the 1S, the discless 1S, and the X. Here's the thing. The I don't think the One S and the Discless One X are the exact same system. Just one literally does not have a hard drive, uh, a disk drive. Right. They did a teardown of it, and you can see on the board the slots where the disk drive week. is supposed to go. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's I, down one. I think she might be talking about um, uh, the next generation. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or, did, well, or, or PC too. So this has got to run on that PC also. Yeah. Uh, okay, so if we're talking about next generation, then it's PC, um, next Xbox, next Xbox, the One X, and the One S, and the and the the launch. The, no, 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 because no, there's going to be the the uh, the streaming console and the and the physical next generation console. Well, if. Because I feel like the streaming console and the physical next generation console, those should still be comparable yes. spec wise. Yes. You know, the streaming console, you know, if anything, it, it should match in terms of, you know, what the physical version does. 
And even so, like, you know, the cloud computing should match what the physical console does as well. So in that situation, you are still developing for one system. True. Uh, but Sony's going to... Sony right now develops for two. They have the Pro also. Yeah. Let's not forget about that. Uh, so I don't know what four different systems you're talking about, but potentially a bunch of systems. Yeah. But it should be easy because it's freaking Microsoft. You develop yeah. it for PC and then it should just work. Yeah, I mean, PC developers have been doing this for years. They develop one game for like a thousand different configurations. That's part of why some PC games are broken though when they try yeah. to, when they do it for PS4, Xbox One, and then PC. Yeah. Sometimes the PC version kind of yeah. isn't very good. Anyway, the next one is also GameStop recently said next gen isn't as far away as people think. Plus, retail had just been briefed about Sony's plans so they can adjust their inventory plans, etc. And then he said, My feeling Sony will make a surprise announcement this year to reveal PS5 coming out. Uh, reveal, reveal, not release. To make the announcement next year, uh, pff, it's research, <laughs> def possible. It, but that's not what they said. It's a stretch. It's a stretch. Oh, what did I? Th- why? What is? Yeah, I don't know. I'm ha- I'm having a dyslexia. <laughs> it's a stretch. Death possible, but I think it's less likely that PS5 will be announced next year. Yeah, I think next year. Yeah, I think for sure next year. I don't know what GameStop's talking about. I mean, Sony probably started telling retailers now to get prepped, but that probably because it takes them a while to get prepped. You know. Well, GameStop saying next gen isn't as far away as people think. That's pretty subjective. Yeah. Like, you know, how far away do people think it is? Yeah. You know, I, th- I think most of us think it's next year, right? Yeah. Or most of us. I don't know about the general public, you know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, enjoy. 0555 says, I actually, I actually, I'm like that, LOL. I've got hundreds of Blu-rays and UHD Blu-rays. If it's a movie I want, I'll get it for cheap at used stores or on sale and i own it forever with special features netflix and other streaming services have lower quality and cycles out films so often i don't even bother yeah that's that's goes back in line with the whole you know streaming future for media yeah. and stuff and i agree with him you know for you know almost 100 percent when it especially when it comes to movies because those get cycled out regularly the quality is much better through dvd and blu-ray and uh H, you know, UHD Blu-ray. Um, also, the special features, which are slowly like being not that they're being phased out, but there's a lot less of them now than there were back in the like the glory days of DVD. Mm. So you know, it's all some things to consider. Also, too, like if you buy a Blu-ray disc and you know what you're doing, you can rip it to your computer and then you have a backup file of it. it I feel like it's a collector's thing. It definitely is. Like, like, like. There's always going to be people who want the physical. Yeah. But the large majority of people just want the convenience. Yeah. Like, it's definitely like a casual thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that said, there's still places like iTunes and Amazon um, where you can buy the digital version. But then again, you're at the mercy of. It's like buying a digital game. You're at the mercy of the publisher, or the you know, the storefront. You know, right. if they're, are they going to take it down, or you know, they could theoretically remove it from your library. It's Coyote says, why am I watching this? I have a $2,000 PC setup. I don't remember what the hell we named last week's video. Was it something about how people who spend $2,000 on a gaming PC should reevaluate their life? I mean, I kind of spent close to that. But it's not really a gaming PC. It's it's part of a game. What we know about the PS5 and the next-gen consoles. Oh, that's why, yeah. Because, you know, the PS5 probably won't be 2000 Yeah, but you're going to buy a freaking uh, console and you know it. You at least have a Switch. <laughs> yeah. It's like a 90% Because otherwise, you yeah, you want to be watching Wolf then. Yeah. Uh, Wesley Patterson, ASMR. You two internet dads eat cookies while talking to, to you about games. Your two internet dads eat cookies while talking to you about games. So, basically, they're saying... We're the internet dads. Yes. Or we eat cookies into the mic. Yeah. Uh, that's the show, man. That's what you yeah. signed up for. Ashley says, that cookie crunch at 114 is literally amazing. I'm going to have to go back and listen to the show. Let's go back and listen to it. <laughs> All right. I kind of want to eat it. Well, while you pull that up, I'll read the last one from Francisco uh, Ramos. I listen to my podcast with earbuds 
So it is disgusting to hear you eat cookies like you have to, um, like you have no idea. Other than that, great show, guys, as always. I real I tried really hard not to eat it into the mic. Yeah, it's just I I, I go like this, you know. Yeah. Now I now I now I definitely need to freaking know what this sounded like. Mm-hmm. All right. Let me do a little bit of this. All right, here we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's very creamy. Oh, yeah, it smells like orange. It smells very orange and creamy. Mm -hmm. It's got a good rhythm to it. Oh, okay. it's good. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one of us that was. Yeah. Both of our mics were pretty far away from our faces. <laughs> All right. I think that was a satisfying crunch. That was. Yeah. Me. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. In yeah. fact, I think we need to do more of that. Yep. I'll have food next week. <laughs> so thanks for listening. Yeah. Uh, that's that's it for last yeah, week. Yeah, right? now we're in the chat. And we got some stuff. We had $2 from Lance uh, Australia. Love your content. Keep it up, guys. Thanks, man. Thank you. And Chris uh, has been a member for 18 months now. Thank you, Chris. Damn, thank you. Uh, hey, oh, did I switch the stream back? Yes, I did. Just, you know, if you're a member here on YouTube or if you subscribe or on Twitch using Twitch Prime, which is free, if you have Amazon Prime, it helps support us. It's free for you. Yes. You get one, you get one a month and it doesn't lapse, so you have to go back and do it every month. Mm -hmm. It's free for you. Uh, you link your account to your Discord account and you get some videos early. You get uh, private chat time with me. Will's never there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you can... Uh, we're going to play Mario Kart this Sunday with all of our supporters. So do that because we play smash brothers a lot and people want a freaking uh mario kart now anyway we're in the chat now yes start asking us your good questions not your bad questions okay maybe your bad questions uh raymond ratto with uh two dollars ah it's just a box i want to say that's a metal gear reference yeah that is a Metal Gear thing. Mm -hmm. Savage Love 2004. Do you think it's worth getting a PS4 now when they just announced that the PS5 might, which might be backwards compatible and may be coming in 2020? Should I wait, get PS4 used or new? What <sighs> games do you want to play on your PS4? Yeah. And how many of them are there? And yeah. can you play them all before the PS5 comes out? Because <laughs> if all this time between now and the PS5 comes out, that's that you could be playing those games. Yes, yeah. you could be playing those games. I feel You're like losing that you don't get that time until back. we have an official confirmed release date for whatever next gen systems coming out. It's still a good time to buy the current system. Like, don't say just just because you know they they said we're working on the PS5 doesn't mean that the, the PS4 is dead in the water right this very second. It's the same thing with the Switch. Just because, you know, there's rumors of the the, re, the revised model coming out doesn't mean you, that should prevent you from going out and get a Switch, getting a Switch now. Right. Uh, somebody, I think Alex Ar Arias in the chat was asking if Play Asia is a safe website. Yes. Yes. I, I've, I've ordered a mm -hmm. couple of things from Play Asia. It might take forever. It yeah. might take like upwards of a month to get to you, but no, it's totally secure. Yeah. Um, Great for buying foreign goods. Yes. Uh, Mecha Dragon, did you guys cover the story about the guy that plagiarized Boomstick's review finally apologizing? Did you see this? Phil Mewson. Phil Mewson, yeah. I didn't realize I had alerts set for his tweets. Really? And I got an alert on my phone that he tweeted. So I looked at it and it was him after a year yeah. apologizing. So Philip Mewson... Uh, Worked at IGN. He was a Nintendo YouTuber. Mm -hmm. uh, I never, I never had any run-ins with him. I don't know him at all. Um, he did a lot of Nintendo stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, then he got hired by IGN. Mm -hmm. uh, wrote, did a lot of stuff. Wrote a lot of reviews. He was on their podcast a lot. I think he was like the host of the podcast. Yeah, he hosted Nintendo um, Voice Chat. Then he got outed for plagiarizing Boomstick, Boomstick Gaming, which was a smaller YouTube yeah. channel. He plagiarized their review of Dead Cells. Right. And, and then it, from that, it came out that he had plagiarized a whole lot of other reviews. Yes. Uh, for his channel and for IGN. Yeah. None of mine, which I'm upset about. Yeah. But, you know. But, you know, whatever. Um, so then he went into hiding for a year. Well, no. Well, okay. He, 
he s- denied ever uh, plagiarizing anybody. He mm-hmm. just said that it was it was totally like a he, it was totally like a like unintentional a, a, unintentional. Yeah. He just said the same words. Yeah, and then he's like. You guys say that there's more evidence. Where's the evidence? Yeah. And then, and then, then, then all the evidence came out. Unleashed all the evidence. And yeah. then he shut up for a year. Yeah. Um, and came back and finally said... Oh, no, no, no. Then he released a video. Uh, after that, he released a video reviewing something, pretending like nothing ever happened. Really? Yeah. I'm pretty sure he did that. And then all the comments were like, yo... Nobody likes you. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking plagiarize everybody. Um, and now he uh, finally released an apology video. That's like well, three minutes long. He released two. He released an apology video. Okay. And then he released a response to his apology. I didn't see the response. Yeah, apparently like in the response, because like people like still had questions and stuff and he kind of answered them, but he's still like tr- still doing like the sad puppy act from the from his apology video. How long is it? It's, uh, it's only like two and a half minutes. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch it later. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, three months ago, the ten best Switch games of 2018. Yeah, yeah, he came back and started doing videos. Look at that, son of a bitch. So listen, here, he, all right. I've never been involved in this caliber of a controversy before right. myself, but let me give you a little schooling on what I think the right thing to do is. Nick Robinson from Polygon, Polygon or Kotaku, Polygon. Those Kotaku. Oh, you know it is Polygon. Polygon. He got into some the whole. He was sliding into DMs that he shouldn't yeah, be sliding yeah, into. Yeah, apparently he, people said he he got fired for being like really gross. Yeah, you know, but nobody knows the details on why. Mm-hmm. Went dark for a couple months, came back. Everybody just forgot about it. <laughs> nobody th- thinks that's the same guy. Yeah. It's the same guy. Yeah, you didn't like it. You hated this man six months ago, and now all of a sudden you're fine with it. Everybody's retweeting yeah. all the stuff, watches YouTube videos. So. Pretend like it never happened and then come back and then pretend like it never happened. <laughs> I feel like that's not the <laughs> best course of action. No, it's definitely yeah. not the best course of action. Um, It's not for Nick Robinson either. I don't know why it worked. I don't know. That, imagine if Louis C.K. just came back and pretended like nothing He's happened. trying to. He's trying. He's, He's trying. trying to. It's not working. It's not it's working at all. <laughs> uh, it works for some people. It does. Not... Louis C.K. <laughs> or Philip Mewson. Or Philip Mewson. Uh, yeah. I kind of feel bad for him. He should ask PewDiePie what to do. PewDiePie yeah. knows exactly what to do in these situations. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I feel bad for him too. But like, clearly, I felt bad for him when it was happening. Because yeah. it's like, uh, he's just a guy who didn't real. He, he, he didn't clearly, to, Like, in journalism school, they tell you this is the worst thing that could happen. Well, in regular school, they tell you don't plagiarize <laughs> yes. people. He, he's clearly somebody who didn't understand the gravity of his situation. Uh, he was just, I, I mean, he probably was just excited to, you know, have a job at IGN and do videos on video game stuff. Uh, and when he got outed, he didn't, he didn't know how to handle it. So that's why he went dark, obviously. And I think he, he's just now starting to understand like what happened and how he basically ruined any chance of ever having a career in gaming again because yeah. of this. Yep. So. Um, yeah, like I feel bad for him in that respect, but like I would have felt worse for him if he apologized from the very get go. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. I didn't realize like that. Like this was such a, this was going to be as big of a deal as it is. Like I shouldn't have done what I did. Blah, blah, Mm -hmm. blah. Um, but no, he, he pretended like he lied. He pretended like it, it, like he's innocent. He pretended like he, it was just a coincidence. Mm Mm-hmm. Which, ha- that happens. Yeah. A co- coincidence is like that. People say the same thing sometimes mm-hmm. about games and stuff. Or sometimes you'll watch a video and then you won't realize that what they said is in the back of your head, you know? Yeah. And you'll just say the same thing. Mm-hmm. Comedians say this. Oh, yeah. That that they'll unintentionally steal jokes. Yeah. Um, but then there's people who actually steal jokes. Mm-hmm. Philip Mewson is one of the people who would actually steal them. Right. <laughs> like, because it was a little too obvious. Right, right. Also, I'm one of those people that purposely doesn't look at other people's content before i make my own right in most cases yeah. like yeah. 90 percent of the Some, time i mean sometimes it's inevitable sometimes if you're researching something yes. like you need to look at some other I, I do it like if i'm researching a comic or a movie to talk about i'll look at what other people have to say about it or like you know get a basic summary of it but then you spend like two hours rewording it to make sure that it's your well, voice no, coming no, no, through no. if it's something like a game 
that I ha- that I have to review or talk about. Yeah, I don't want to know anybody else's opinion. Right. You know. No, there's that. But if like some in a case like if I'm doing the history of something, you know, I'll quickly watch you know a summary of the comic or whatever. Well, you you're doing research. Yeah. That, that's yeah. Not, that's not a review or anything. Exactly. Yeah, that's what. I'm, For example, this. Yeah. The, the video I did the other day on the G Pi case. Yeah. Um, I had to figure out how to put it together. There was barely yeah. any instructions to this thing. So I watched uh, EPA Prime, ETA Prime. Yeah, I forgot his the YouTube channel, but he does a lot of uh, uh, like handheld devices and stuff yeah. and, and emulation devices. So I watched his video on it just to see how to put the freaking thing. And that's all it was was it was an assembly video. It wasn't yeah. really a review. Um, and then all of my comments were, "You should watch ETA Prime's <laughs> video because you don't know what you're talking about." Yeah. So there you go. People didn't even think I watched that video. There you go. <laughs> anyway. SOS Ninja says, hey, Will. Yes. I know you don't like Gotham, but your series pitch idea removed uh, interactions between villains, my favorite part of the show. How could you make a show that relies more on villain chemistry? A show that would rely more on villain chemistry would probably have to take place in the present day uh, when there's an active Batman putting these villains in prison. Um, It would probably have to be like the reverse of Gotham Central. Gotham Central, of course, being the great comic book series by Greg Rucka, Ed Brubaker, and uh, Michael Lark about like the GCPD where Batman is like just in the background as always. So it would probably have to be, you know, about criminals in Gotham City dealing, you know, with a town where not only is there the police, but there's this crazy ass vigilante who will beat you to half to death and throw you in jail because of it. So that like that's actually a very good idea for a show. Follow the you know the criminal underbelly of present day Gotham, you know have it be about like a low level thug working his way through the ranks of all the different crime families. Like season one, he starts working for the Riddler. Riddler gets thrown in jail. Season two, he works for the Penguin, and then season three is the Penguin's gang versus Bane's gang. You know, it's something like that. That could be a very good thing. You should write that. I should. <laughs> I should write for Warner Brothers. Uh... Hire me. Kritsu Kirby says, what do you think is your favorite new game so far this year? Any games already released or releasing in a month? I'm still playing Resident Evil 2 Remake. <laughs> My game of the year is most likely going to be Mario Maker. Right. I don't see anything they could do to screw it up that badly. Um, My favorite game that I played this month is Katana Zero so far. Mm-hmm. game is amazing and it's on the Switch and it's only $15. You should check it out. Uh, otherwise, I've been playing the hell out of Smash Brothers. Um, a lot of people in the chat are debating between buying Smash Brothers or something else. Smash Brothers is amazing, but you have to like that type of game and have people to play with. You know? And have the time to unlock everybody. The, 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 the want to unlock everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want to unlock everybody. I just don't want to do it the way they're telling me to do it. <laughs> it really wasn't, it didn't take me that long. It feels like it's taking me forever. Well, you don't play it. That's why. Even when I was playing it, like it was taking, I felt like it was taking forever. How many hours do you think you have in that game? I have no idea. I don't think you have more than like five. There's, There's no, no way. way. There's no way you have more than five if you didn't unlock every character. I'll look at it. I feel like I sunk a decent amount of hours. But what that. I did was I left every time I played around, I would leave and right. go back. Because you unlock a new character every 10 minutes. Right. Um, actually, we could do the friggin' math right now 10 times 72. I think there's 72. Uh, 720. I don't know why I didn't just do that in my head. Uh, divided by 60. 12 hours. If you did it the way that they wanted you to do it. Okay. You play for 12 hours and you're like, which is a lot, actually. Yeah. It's actually a lot. Yeah. But no, you do one round and then you leave and then you cut that in like half. Right. Um. Austin Bench with $2. My dudes. My man. Um. The noob gaming experiences. I came late to the party. Why we don't have to talk about Switch Mini? Oh, scroll. This is YouTube, man. You can scroll to be. Yeah, rewind. Can anyone be kind enough to do a summary on what kind? What King? Oh, everybody calls me King Alfred now. Well, that's the new thing. This new guy that I look like. King Alfred. It's some show, and the actor looks like me. I guess in the show he looks like me. It's got like the same hair and like sunken in eyes and stuff. Alfred the Great was the king of Wessex from 871 to 886 it's, it's AD. Show. I look like him in the show. In the show. All right. It's better than Lord Farquaad or whatever. Yeah. I got that. 
a lot because of my forehead, I guess. The Last Kingdom? I is think. that the show? Well, yeah, just look at the guy. You'll know when you see the guy. You're like, oh, yeah. So that, okay. Kinda? He's got more of a mustache. White dudes with long hair. White though. dudes with long White hair dudes and beard. With long hair yeah. And beard. Yeah, that's, that's me. Um, so screw you. Scroll back if you want to see Um. Uh, I don't know this guy's name. Do you think there is any chance we will get a port of Kingdom Hearts 3 or at least a remaster of Kingdom Hearts 1? I'm surprised that they haven't put Kingdom Hearts on Switch yet. I think there's a chance. Yeah. Uh, a port of Kingdom Hearts 3, I think it's going to take a while. Yeah. But uh, 1 and 2, there really is no reason why they couldn't do that. Yeah. Get good with TF says, what console do you guys play most? The Switch. Uh, well, I've been doing my ps4 a lot because i've been doing resident evil 2 remake and once that's done i'm gonna go back to red dead but yeah i try to throw on the switch every once in a while because it's just right there uh aid adian says will you ever do smash tournaments or play mario kart on saturdays instead of sundays no i enjoy my saturdays thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> um Uh, L. Cheshire Illustration says, uh, Katana Zero is great. I just hope the next iteration takes less than the five years this one took. Well, this was one guy who made the whole game. <laughs> so, uh, cut him some slack. Oh, I remembered what we talked about last week. That I what did to we talk about. about last week? Uh, somebody said something about Smash cat, uh, like indie characters being in Smash and like what indie game oh, character yeah. will we want in Smash? Downwell is a Japanese indie game. Oh. Because we were thinking, uh, we're, yeah. we're pretty much thinking that all the DLC characters for Smash are going to be characters that are popular in Japan. Yeah. I don't think they're going to pull from an American game or anything. It, 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 what? I found King, da uh, what's his name? King, uh, King Alfred from the show. It took it that long to find him? I was, the Google image search was confusing him with like the main character from the show. Oh, okay. No, not really. Let me see. Let me see. I I get I get what they're saying. Yeah, just the just hair and the, the hair forehead. And, and the hair and the forehead. Yeah, and the beard. Whatever, man. Or as D Dub said, Bob, they ain't a forehead. You got a five head going on there. Jeez, you're all racist. <laughs> That's what's happening. Um. But anyway, uh, yeah, Downwell is a Japanese indie game, so yeah, maybe we'll get Downwell and Switch. That, that would be, be interesting. Downwell yeah. and Smash. That would actually be really cool. Yeah, uh, I like Downwell a lot. Uh, Mecha Dragon says, "Can we open a poll for how long till Will finishes Resident Evil Remake?" Uh, well, here's the thing: I beat the game already. Oh. I, I beat Leon A and Claire B. So I now I'm running through Claire A and Leon B, and I'm on Leon B right now. Is it any different? Marginally different. I mean, look, if you, it, it's less different than it was in. Uh, yeah, it's less know. different than the original. Here's the thing, though: if you've played the original Resident Evil Two, you know you got to beat it four times. Hmm. You got to get both A's and both B's. Yeah, in, in this version, it's not at like the differences between like the A's and B's are not as different as they were in the original. Mm -hmm. um, but you still got to do it. It's still part of the game. Um, and if, uh, fourth survivor, I'm just probably just going to play that on easy and just plow through that just to see how it is. And then go back to right. And you're not going to play tofu. No. Cause that's like hard mode. That's like, super yeah, hard that's, mode. that's literally just, you get a knife Yeah. and the knives in that game break. I think this is the last one I'm going to read. TF right. soul says, do you think we'll get a Nintendo direct or will they continue to Twitter drop release dates for major releases such as Link's awakening and cadence of Hyrule? I think we will get directs for sure, probably like yeah. six months. But I think that they're gonna r just randomly drop information on Twitter, like they have been doing. Yeah, they randomly dropped the Joker video. They the randomly Persona dropped video. Labo VR. True, a lot of big stuff. They just don't yeah. care. They just drop it. But it makes big waves, you know. Yeah. Whenever they do, they they know what they're doing. Yeah. And lastly, Frank Clark says, it's okay, Bob. I, too, have a forehead comparable to Vegeta's. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, Wolfden Live is every single Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here 
on youtube.com slash wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version on Thursday for you to watch on demand whenever you want. So you can rewind and see us talking about the Switch Mini that's allegedly coming out in China. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We are also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Stitcher. And if you listen to us on any of those platforms, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on those respective stores. Uh, enjoy Endgame this weekend. Yes. Also, uh, if you want to play some Mario Kart with your boy, uh, make sure you're a supporter so you get, uh, what's it called? So you're guaranteed to play. Mm-hmm. If you're if if you if you don't have any money, then there's a chance you could play. But you know, if you if you support us either here on YouTube or over on twitch.tv slash Wolfden, which is free if you have Amazon Prime, yeah. then we'll play some Mario Kart. Uh and I won't be on Twitch tomorrow because of Endgame. Yeah. And I'm filming something that I can't talk about. But thank you guys for watching. We'll see you all later. Goodbye. Enjoy yourselves. Bye. Uh.